Hello and welcome to Funny Hex, the show where I literally walk you through hacks that are weird, unusual and somewhat useful. I'm Kevin Sandon and today I'm going to walk you through the car phone. <laughs> so your phone's ringing, you don't know where it is. What's the worst thing that could happen right now? How about it drive away from you? Well, that's kind of the modification that I made to this phone. This is what I affectionately call the car phone. I've had an amazing response from it. I took it to the pub one night, and my geeky friends were like, Sweet, that's really cool. And my, the non-geeky friends, and perhaps a little bit drunk, were like, Oh my gosh, he's got a robot phone! So, let's see how to do it. So the concept is simple. We steal power from the battery over here, and when the vibrator would normally go, we use that as a signal to trigger the motor here. So let's talk about the risks involved. Most phones these days come with a lithium-ion battery, which, although they're getting safer, they still have certain risks involved. So go and Google for lithium-ion precautions, YouTube for lithium-ion explosions. That should be enough to convince you. Aside from that, a manufacturer is not going to support a modified product, so don't do this for something you're not willing to lose. So, let's get into the detail. To steal power from the battery, we need to find a nice spot on the circuit board as close to the battery as possible without actually being on the battery itself. In this case, it wasn't particularly feasible to solder to the connector, but that probably wasn't the best idea anyway. It's worthwhile trying to get this right first time, because if your phone's anything like mine, it's going to be a real pain to open up again. Next, we need to find a good source of a signal to turn the motor on and off. I see two possibilities. We've got the LCD backlight, and we've got the vibrator. The LCD backlight has a problem that it's going to turn on pretty much every opportunity. The vibrator, however, is just going to turn on when we've got a text or when we've got a phone call, which is exactly the behaviour we want. This is where the multimeter comes in. With minimal probing, we need to find out which line goes to the power and which line is the signal. Once we know this, we know which is positive, which is negative, and therefore whether we need an NPN transistor or a PMP transistor. It's not going to break anything to get it wrong, but if you do get it wrong, you're not going to get the behaviour you want. Don't try to connect the motor directly to the board. It'll only end in tears and won't even make the motor twitch. The transistor is the most important part of the puzzle because it separates the fragile circuit board from the ruthless motor that's just urging to go. This is the highest rating of this class that I could find, and it was still nowhere near powerful enough. It just blew instantly without the slightest sign of life. This one was better in that the motor twitched, but that was all it did, and then it was gone. And this transistor... It was beautiful. It's way overkill, but it did the job beautifully. One of the flip sides to this is that when you use this type of transistor, you generally require a heatsink because they're working with so much power that they get rather hot. In this case, we're actually working very near the bottom end of what this transistor can do, so it's not quite as urgent, and for the amount of time that it actually spends on, and therefore getting hot, is actually very little, and so therefore it doesn't really get that hot. For me, it's worked very well. You may need to have a heat sink yourself. This brings us on to position. That transistor is not going to fit inside the phone. So that's why it's sitting on the outside. It does have the advantage, though, that we actually have air flowing through it. So when I was talking about the heat, that is actually semi-solved with this. As an experiment, I tried hooking up the vibrator motor to the rubber bung to see if it was able to maintain motion. With a bit of help it almost maintained motion, so really that's nowhere near good enough. So we got this thing. It's a 3 volt motor which is very commonly used in toys. It takes a beating and it just keeps on going and going, so it seemed like the ideal candidate for this. When an electric motor is provided with electricity it produces kinetic energy. When you give it kinetic energy it produces electricity. Now that second scenario isn't so ideal when the electricity is going to flow to places you don't want it to flow to. So we have this little thing. This is a diode. When the electricity is flowing the right way, it's going to do nothing. When the electricity is flowing the wrong way, it's going to allow it to pass straight through, and therefore it shorts it out, and we don't have electricity flowing in the wrong places. Good. The potentiometer allows us to control how strong the signal is that goes through the transistor, and therefore how much power we send through to the motor. This is quite a balancing act, because if we make it too strong, then the phone gets starved for power and shuts off. If we make it too weak, then the car phone just doesn't go anywhere. So without going too far into the details of the electronics, we're basically there. We're stealing power from the battery, we're using the signal of the vibrator, we're sending this through to the transistor, and we're using that to turn the motor on and off. I have also added a safety switch to stop my hair from getting caught up on the phone when I use it, but other than that, that's all there is to it. 
So, let's see it in action. So here I am ringing the phone, and away it goes.